Welcome to the first video of many in the next E9D project. Now when I originally purchased the 2009 335i back in 2015, is so that we had a car that we could fit both my wife and both of our young children in, as my two-seater S2000 wasn't going to be of much use for many years. Now when we got it, the E90 was already a noticeable improvement over the straight line speed of the S2000, but I always knew I wanted to tinker with the setup one day and see what more I could get out of the platform. Now my recent track days with the S2000 have also made me wonder just how the E90 would compare around the same track. To that end, I intend to do full track days with both the S2000 and 335 this year to see just how these two compare. It will also give me an opportunity to mod and tune the N54 engine to get experience with it before doing similar mods to the M550 and M3 in the coming years when their track time comes due. Now my 2009 335i has the M Sport package which includes improved suspension and an aerodynamics package along with an M steering wheel with paddle shifters. Now I purchased it used as the third owner with 70,000 miles on it and we've put roughly 35,000 miles on it in the last eight years. In that time, other than routine fluid maintenance, I replaced the water pump, valve cover, and oil filter housing gaskets, and then as well as the tires, which are now Firestone Firehawk Indy 500s. Now we are going to start with replacing just the plugs and coils on this car to make sure she's ready for the tune. Then, in our next video, we will be adding on an intake and charge pipe to see what difference it makes. We will then move on to installing the JV4, which is what we will get to tinker with with boost and octane levels to see what we can get out of this platform. We will then turn our attention to the six-speed automatic transmission with an XHP tune to make the gear changes quicker and as a final preparation for its track time. Along the way, I intend to also tinker with things like Beamer code for some improvements inside the cabin. And after getting comfortable with the JB4, we will then be adding a VRSF intercooler, downpipes, and exhaust to see what final bolt-on improvements we can get out of the platform. Now everything but the exhaust, which is on back order, is already present and ready to be installed. Now before tuning this car, it's due for a spark plug and coil pack change, so I've ordered some new plugs from Burger Motorsports, which are supposed to work well with my planned future mods, and are two steps colder than the stock N54 plugs. This also helps with my higher boost levels. What you see here is me replacing the plugs and coils in my garage. Now the link to the ones I purchased from Burger Motorsports and FCP Euro are in the description in case you're interested. Now the process is surprisingly straightforward and requires only a few tools. You will need a torque wrench, 8mm and 10mm sockets, an extension for the wrench, and then this kit from Burger Motorsports that includes everything you need to install, remove, and gap your spark plugs, including a magnetic socket. Now once you have all the necessary equipment, you will first remove six 8mm bolts from these locations, which allow you to remove this cowl covering the HVAC system. Next, you will want to remove these two plastic caps on each side that are simply released by pulling up on the clips on each side of them. This will expose two additional 8mm bolts that need to be removed from the left and right. This will now release the cowl that is above the engine. Before it's removed though, you will want to remove the harness from the left and right sensors on the cowl, as well as pull out this plastic bar in the middle that you see me doing here. And you then want to use a straight edge screwdriver to pop all three clamps from holding in the harness wire and then pull out that harness wire so that you're free to remove the entire remaining plastic cowl. We now have access to the full engine. From here, we need to remove three to four bolts holding on the engine cover. Two in the front and one or two in the back and they're going to be secured with a variety of bolts. In my case, they were 10 millimeter bolts and I only had three to remove. Once the engine cover is removed, we can easily replace the spark plugs. Simply pull up on the clamp on the top of the coil and it will release the harness for that coil. Pull the harness out and then pull up on the coil to release it from the plug. I then use a magnetic Burger Motorsports spark plug tool to both unscrew and remove the spark plug. I'm then using a Burger Motorsports gapping tool to gap each one of these new plugs to a gap of 0.022. Now all six of my plugs were noticeably burnt and definitely at the end of their life. Once the new plug is screwed back in, torque it down to 17 foot-pounds and then insert the new ignition coil over the new plug. You should then feel it click and seal as you press down. Then simply put the harness back in to the top of the coil and fold down the lever to finish that plug. We now simply need to do this on the five additional cylinders to finish the job. 
Now after putting everything back together, it's time to give it a wash and a quick ceramic coating to give her as much protection as possible since she's going to be spending the year outside for the first time in her life. There's definitely better ceramic coatings out there, but nothing that I can apply as quickly and easily as this. In addition to that, there is a car cover that will be going on to it when it's not in use for long periods of time in between track events. So now that we've got her looking good and running right, let's see what those draggy results look like at this point in time. Now I'm fortunate enough to have a friend with a mile long driveway along his farm, so I've got a nice safe spot to do some draggy runs and see how it does. Now the road service isn't the best for launches since it's not often traveled, but should otherwise prove ideal for some runs. Now this car doesn't have launch control or anything like that, so I'm simply turning off traction control and launching at about 2000 RPM, giving a gradual acceleration to the pedal instead of slamming on in it at launch to try and avoid as much wheel spin as possible. Now I'm sure I'll need to alter this strategy as we add more power, but for now it seems to be working just fine. Now this time of year, it looks like the best I'm able to achieve is a 5.5 0 to 60 time and a 13.8 quarter mile. That's about two tenths off my best with this car that I was achieving last fall. But it's also very hard to hook these tires up with the temperatures outside near freezing. So it's all really lost in that launch. Now that we have our baseline, we will start to add mods to the car and a goal of trying to get it into the 12s and ready for real track time at Autobahn Country Club. If you would like to follow my progress, please make sure to click the subscribe button under the video and the bell icon next to it to be notified when my future videos are released. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time. Stay safe and stay healthy out there.